So Frank, I have this position, data storyteller, which I think is awesome. And I work for the data science team at Newton. Um, it's an adaptive learning platform. I'm going to give you two sides of what it is a little bit later. Um, I'm going to talk about learning analytics. We're starting to develop analytics tools for, for education at a big scale. And I'm going to give like a very high level um, explanation of the ideas that we're coming um, up with and, and how we're thinking certain things that we're finding um, as we as we are thinking this. So learning analytics just with like with any other analytics fields is the measurement and collection and reporting of, of data, but in this case for about learners and education. Um, and the goal of of this is to uh, guide decision making, obviously, um, by presenting evidence with clarity and like a lot of um, insight to the people who actually guide and drive this educational process, right? And who are these people? So um, there are students, obviously, teachers, also administrators of institutions and all sorts of um, uh, yeah, institutions, then publishers and also policymakers. Um, I'm going to basically focus on the first two that are more directly related to education. Um, also, there are obviously a lot of things to be said about policy and stuff, but I'm just going to focus on, on learning. <coughs> um, all, the, all the methods that we are dealing with uh, just um, follow a similar process that I think business intelligence tools have followed, like um, the way those tools are developed, kind of um, pull methods from economics and, and finance, so we're pulling methods also from uh, developmental models and like psychological studies and things like that. Um, so we find ourselves at this moment where this is coming together. This is a very recent field, learning analytics. Um, the word, I think, is even like more recent than actual data science. Um, so we have, a, we have this moment where um, we have to ask a lot of questions. We don't know what we're doing with it. With, we don't know the, the opportunities, the possibilities that are opening up to us. Um, so institutions and ourselves and everybody who's taking part in this needs to ask a lot of questions about what the effects of this can be. <coughs> So there's a lot of interest in this field. And also, there's a lot of innovation, innovation happening at, uh, in the educational world. And you don't need to be very involved in this to, to know that this is happening. There are a lot of companies that are trying to like, come up with ideas. And, and big institutions have, have been implementing like, breakthroughs and, and like, opening up courses online for, for all over the world, students and everything. Um, so we're asking all these questions. and. <clears throat> about how technology is going gonna, is gonna to change education and how the functions of the different agents that uh, take part in education are going to change. Are teachers going to be uh, doing the same things that they were doing 20 years ago? Are students going to be behaving the same way, interacting between themselves the same way? Um, so if we define analytics as measurement and reporting of, of data from students, this is not, it's not really fair to say that um, that is a true innovation. Like actually, teachers have been doing that all as, as for as long as we know, right? Like they've been tracking scores and grades and attendance records and all types of, of data from students in order to um, understand where these students stand in relation to the expectations that we put on them. Um, but what's changing now is the scale, obviously. Like the amount of data that we can get now is much bigger. So I'm going to give you two cents of what Newton does. Um, so that we, I can illustrate this point a little better. <coughs> and so, as, as we said, Newton defines itself as an adaptive learning platform. And that means that uh, courses that live in this platform are defined in this, in this nonlinear way. Like all the concepts and, 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 and different like, sets of topics and ideas that come together inside a course are related to each other um, with different relationships. Um, they're not one after the other, as we used to define courses, but just like um, they have relationships between them. They have several types of relationships. They have different hierarchies. And, and so we end up with this multidimensional map of all these concepts that, that make up for a course. And then once a student takes this course, all this map is reassessed in, or, in, in order to individualize it to that particular student. So if one student takes an exercise, takes a test, and every, every single step that they make, we assess, we assess that. And it's re the, the whole map is rearranged in order to provide the right next step for them to take. <coughs> so
So in order to do that, we need to be collecting that data. We need to be collecting every single set that they take, the time that they, they take to do every single thing, every single exercise, how they watch a video, how they um, do some teamwork, everything. Right? So we have now the infrastructure to be collecting all that amount of data that we're, that we're going to have to communicate later on. Is this, yeah. So this is a simplified uh, vision of one of our courses. This is um, every bubble is a set of different lessons, and every little bubble is a set of different questions and exercises. You can see a few students in the beginning that actually, like, each one of these is a student. And they're all taking the same course, but they have like, completely different approaches to it. They all do different exercises and different lessons at different moments, um, depending on, on, on what they've been doing well, what they've been doing wrong. Some students can move on from something that they already proved that they can, they can do it. Um, and as course advances, you can see that there's some, some trends and a certain highway of students through different, different topics. But every, everyone kind of like advances through the course at a different pace, at a different at a different um, order and, and structure, right? <coughs> so if you imagine a class like the one using in high school in math, for example, this, is, this would be like your teacher knowing exactly every single step that you've taken. So when you did homework at home, your teacher would know that you tried once and you were maybe not convinced by some of the, from some of the answers or some of the results. Maybe you tried again and hesitated between two different answers. Like they would know exactly all these steps, right? <coughs> so if you've tutored some time or if you've mentored some other student, you know that this can be accomplished by very, very close interaction. But in a class or in, in a high education setting, this is pretty much impossible. So what we're trying to do with this is, with learning analytics, is provide the same, the same type of experience, this like very, very close insight into the educational experience and the learning path at, at a much bigger scale. OK, so we can move on. So why do we want this? Well, first of all, this allows us to tailor a little bit the content and, and the structure of all the courses to individual needs, to strengths and weaknesses that different students can have. Also, like, there are different patterns of working, um, different times, different paces, et cetera, which improves time's effectiveness for every student. Like, if you don't have to repeat stuff that you already know, um, you can move on, or maybe if you can identify a strategy that with something that you struggle a lot, you, you know where you're struggling um, so that you can work a lot on that and like move on after that. So this allows for flexibility and, and accessibility to um, all, all these different students. And these are some of the things that we're starting to see and we're starting to um, explore a little bit. Like um, if, if we know all these patterns about how students approach different types of knowledge and different strategies, we can, we can imply certain interests, like what, what are the things that keep certain types of students engaged, what are the certain things that keep students motivated. So we can explore those interests and maybe in the long term um, make decisions that are going to guide a little bit their, their long term educational path, right? Um, as in the same way, <coughs> we're finding also some of this, some of this um, information, some of this presentation of data uh, allows us to support and like maybe help and contribute to the development of more higher level um, abstract skills that I'm going to talk about in a minute. So even if um, what teachers have done all, all our lives, uh, monitoring students' uh, mm, progress and stuff, we have never used that in, in order to tailor that education to specific students. We, we test students. We, 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 they get a score, and we don't do anything with that score. We just say, this is your rank. This is, this is where you stand in relation to your expectations. But we, what we could do with that is understanding that, that that is a measure of that progress. And so if a student already knows that, that topic, they can move on to something else. But if not, we can provide additional help, complementary materials, and we haven't done that. <coughs> what we do instead is our, our, our educational system is based on the idea that all students need to learn at the same pace and have the same approach to knowledge. They have the same interest and learn in the same manner with the same goals. And that is, that is a notion that I think we need to change. And now we have some of the tools that, that would allow us to do that. So learning analytics are these tools that help us understand this individuality 
and, and context. They un help us understand <coughs> where a student stands in relation to the expectations that are put in them, to the expectations that they themselves have about, about learning. Um, so understanding this individuality, individuality allows us to identify some students that might be at risk, at risk meaning um, they are not maybe engaged enough or they are struggling a lot with certain things. So we understand that risk better. How are they at risk? How can we help? This also allows us to identify these best practices that can, that can allow us to help these students that are at risk. By understanding how they are at risk, we can provide some practices that we know have worked in the past. We've seen different types of students struggling the same, the same way, and we know some strategies that have worked, some strategies that haven't, um, so we can provide those. Also, providing <coughs> Continuous and more accurate feedback to um, different students can keep them engaged much more. If you, if you know exactly what, what's happening and, and the reaction and the effect that what you're doing has, if, if you're working on an exercise but you don't know if the answer is right or wrong, you can assume it's right and just move on. Maybe you don't know that you're making some mistakes and if you get continuous feedback, that keeps focus and engagement much more. Also, um, understanding the personality and the individuality of these different students allows us to create better matchups. So if teachers understand these different personalities, the strengths of a student might be of one type and the strengths of another student might be of another type, maybe the combination of these two students in a team um, like allows you to develop certain interpersonal skills, some team working skills that you would not be able to see otherwise. And finally, as, a, as I mentioned, parents of interest and, and well, we need to be able to um, present that information very, very clearly, right? Because all, all the, the people that we're helping with this are students and, and teachers. And students and teachers are not required to be data scientists. So they need to be able to navigate this data in a very, very clear, very, very natural way. Um, they don't need to, to, be, to be making very hardcore analysis. We need to make that for them. So uh, it has to be a very, very clear way of navigating that data. So <coughs> I said I was gonna talk about students and teachers, and, and I didn't make any, any distinction. And that's because in, in any of these things that I, that I talked about, and I, that's because I think that the roles of teachers and students are gonna become much more intricate. Um, but I'm gonna focus now on students only. Um, we know um, that we can help teachers by providing information about students, um, but we can also help students by providing them with better insight about their own progress. We, can, we, understand, we understand much better where they stand in relation to their expectations, and we can provide them with that information. I, we call that metacognitive learning. <coughs> that is your own perception of your own learning, um, where you stand in relation to those expectations, right? So we are pretty bad at that. We're pretty bad at uh, assessing, um, am I doing right? Am I doing too much? Am I doing too little? Because basically, if you're, if you're trying to learn something, that means that you don't have a very global idea of what you're trying to learn. So if you want to assess where you stand or what you've learned in relation to what you have to learn, since you don't know what you have to learn because you haven't reached that, this is, this is pretty obvious, right? So what we can do with learning analytics is to provide an accurate picture of the exact, thi the exact things that, you, that you've been learning, the, the ones that are strengths, the ones that are weaknesses, and maybe the things that you have to work more strongly on and the things that you can move up on after. <coughs> So understanding one's path better can help motivation, can help discover those interests, confidence, like all sorts of different things. Maybe we don't want to present all the information at the same time. Maybe there are different, different aspects of the information that we want to keep hidden from the student because we want to engage them much more and like provide more, more um, resources for them to be motivated. Um, but making those decisions constantly, I feel like um, it, it has to, it improves motivation and it improves responsibility, mindfulness about these strategies that you're choosing on approaching knowledge. So um, I'm not pretending that we'll be able to capture all aspects of the educational experience by analytics, but there are certain things that we're finding as, as, we, as we think about this that we didn't necessarily think in the beginning when we started like, with the idea of developing analytical tools for education. So for example, we think that there are major contributions or at least contributions that we can make to these higher level abstract skills. For example, um, how would analytics help critical thinking? <coughs> via all these metacognitive learning tools, via 
the students understanding where they stand and what they have to do to, to reach certain goals. The responsibility that is, that is encouraged by making decisions, by choosing <coughs> strategies, um, would enhance motivation and, and confidence in this decision making. So you would, you would understand what you're thinking a certain way and, and maybe like try and, and, and think a different way. So you would, you would keep trying different strategies for career thinking that maybe you wouldn't have thought of. Also team working, I mentioned that. Um, different combinations of team, of team matchups and, and mentoring matchups and also other tools, collaborative tools, versioning, different, different uh, tools for working on the same file at the same time and different communication tools that are obviously known by everybody. Creativity, how can we encourage creativity by using analytics? Well, this is a little bit difficult, um, but I think, obviously, I want to mention again, this is, I'm not pretending that we'll be able to capture all the educational experience here. We, we cannot provide everything that you have to learn and like every, all the development of creativity via analytics, but there are some things that we can contribute to. Like um, the increased self-awareness leads to a greater perseverance and risk-taking. Um, if I know where I stand, if I know things that I don't know, if, if I know the interests that I have, maybe I can explore my limits a little further. Maybe I can make richer associations of things that I had not thought of. Um, and also, like providing a much more inter interdisciplinary and 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 more effective mastery of basic skills allows us allows us to make these associations and more creative associations better and faster. So, how does this affect teachers? Teachers we find are a little scared about these things. Um, I, I don't think there's any reason for it. I think that teaching, I've been a teacher myself for, for some time, and I know that most of the time that you spend teaching is not spending teaching, it's spending in different things. And I don't understand teaching as repeating the same stuff over and over again to different students that have completely different goals, completely different approaches, completely different um, interests, completely different strengths. That's not really teaching. I think there, there are a lot more in, interesting things in education than that, and, and we can open opportunities to teachers to develop those, those skills. <coughs> so using this, these opportunities that we open up here, um, I think that teachers are gonna be allowed to design the conditions for this optimal learning, design the conditions meaning meaning designing this map of the course in a much more rich and complex way so they can design knowledge in a way that is, that is much more mindful so that students can navigate it in a more effective way. And also focusing more on, on these collaborative interactions and, and designing teamwork situations and, and different environments that pro promote creativity. So, and also they're gonna be responsible for providing all sorts of strategies to develop critical thinking and other and other of these high level skills. I think that uh, we're at a very early stage of development of these tools, but um, I think that there are a lot of opportunities that we don't know where we're going, we don't know what the risks are, there are definitely risks in all revolutions and this is probably one of them. Um, but there are also a lot of opportunities that we need to explore and, and just be mindful of, of where we're going and what we want uh, education to become in the future. So that's it. Thank you.